Hey, everyone. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to um, our season two, uh, episodes one through eight, Breaking Bad Reviews. Um, I'm Owen Finch, and I'm here with... AJ Talent. And um, if you want to see like an in-depth uh, review of every episode, you should check out our episode reviews. But uh, this is yeah. more of like an overview uh, to get ready for the uh, Breaking Bad movie in a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, we have we have uh, we have two weeks to get like watch everything. Um, yeah, and uh, just so you know, uh, he hasn't seen he didn't when we were reviewing it. Uh, you hadn't seen it yet, so those are like uh, in the moment type of things. Uh, yeah. This is like we will be spoiling things that happen throughout the show, so you have been warned. So yeah, we'll just say it like. Watch the whole show before you finish the rest of this review. Now that we said that, Walt dies. Um, <laughs> we should yeah, just, that, you should have clicked off already. Yeah. So um, that, that needs to be a joke every time you do this. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. So we left off with season one, pretty much where uh, Tuco beat the crap out of his own guy. And uh, Walt and Jesse looked on in fear. Um mm. And basically, like we said, we're not going to go over, like, every little thing that happens, but we're going to go over important stuff. Um, so season two takes place, like, right after this situation happens. Yeah, like a couple um, days, maybe. No, it's right after. Um, oh, is it? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and, I already uh, forgot. Yeah. One thing that's important about, actually, season two, episode one, is this is when uh, Walt, like, figures, basically reveals, like, how much money he's going to need, um, you know, um to you, you know make yeah, to, uh, 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 make sure his family is fed and took taken care of for the like the rest of their lives basically yeah uh, uh junior's college holly's going through school rent all that stuff yeah and then um pretty much um when we're about to leave um tuco uh you know the, the guy that he beat the crap out of basically you know because he beats a shit out of him is about to like die so um, you know, yes, it's Walt to like take care of him because he's smart. <laughs> yeah, I like how Tuco's logic. That guy's smart. He probably can save this guy's life. Yeah. Um, but then when he dies, um, pretty much uh, his other uh, crewman uh, stuffs his dead body um, like in behind like a couple of cars that are just hanging around at the junkyard. And uh, I like to uh, when they say uh, you know what um. Walt, Walt and Jesse are gonna, about to leave and said, I thought we were done here. And then Tuco says, I decide when we're done. Kind of implying, you know, basically he's gonna, threatening to kill him, uh, in a sense. Um, yeah. so, so after the, the whole rest of the first episode is Walt and Jesse being terrified of Tuco and uh, thinking of ways to kill him. Yep. Um, Jesse buys a gun. Um, and it really and, shows uh, how like, big amateurs they are because like, they don't even know how like, to use the gun. Yeah, um, and I like too. It's kind of what I like about this is uh, seeing Walt and Jesse like in two different worlds. Because Walt like wants to like think like step by step how to do each thing, where Jesse just is gonna go in there without a game plan. Um, so I kind of you know yeah, just like kind of like shoot him and run. And Walt's like, all right, let's be more subtle about it. Yeah, and Walt comes up with the uh, ricin idea. And this is important because. Uh, the ricin uh, becomes a big part of uh, Breaking Bad pretty much throughout the rest of the ricin show. Ricin is like the Chekhov's gun for this entire show. It takes yeah. forever, but they finally use it. Um, and, you know, Walt says that they use this uh, to, like, kill some German um, journalists, like, back in Germany. I think they said around World War II time. Right. Um, and... Uh, Pretty much like uh, what the beauty about this is, is uh, when they do it, if they do an autopsy with Tuco, like they won't be able to find the, you know, license. Um, so, yeah, so uh, that's like it. Walt and Jesse won't get like killed by Tuco's gang because they won't know. And no, one, and no one will think like Walt, you know, because it takes like a few days to like actually die because you'll, you'll just think like you get the flu or something. Um, yeah. And I like the montage they showed Plus, of I mean, like. Tuco's constantly doing meth. So, like, people just assume he just overdosed or something. Yeah. And they actually, like, make it look like, too, like, it's actually, like, meth. Um, so that way he would, sno like, snort it. Um, uh, and then um, they actually do a mon... I, I do like the montage they show, too, of, uh, like, them making it, too, which is pretty damn cool. Um, but, yeah, you see other things, though, like, how they're afraid of it. Like, uh, Walt goes home one night, 
and um, he sees like one of Tuco's henchmen there. Um, and uh, when he goes inside, like he's like spent all the whole night, like um, you know, with a knife, worried like one of his henchmen was gonna come in and kill him. Um, Jesse like buys the gun um, and like hasn't slept pretty much. Um, and you know, Skylar really doesn't know what he's doing because she just thinks he's like physically depressed because of all his cancer stuff and everything. And uh, uh, actually, you brought this up before we start recording, but um, you compared their fear of Tuco to their fear of Gus, and I thought that was really interesting. Uh, so I'll talk. Yeah, and it's it's different because uh, they actually like were physically like afraid like Tuco was going to kill them since he was a nut job, but with Gus, um. Because Gus is so, like, cynical and, like, you know, cautious like Walt is, uh, they knew, like, you know, Gus was going to do it at, like, the most appropriate time. They just didn't know when they were going to do it. So they had, they had to act, but they didn't, you know, they realized they had more time uh, to actually, like, act. Um, yeah, and, like, it, it is kind of like, all right, do you be afraid of, like, the cold calculating villain or the psycho who could just come and beat the shit out of you, whatever, you know? Yeah. It's like, plus it's like, also Tuco is just, like, it's like being afraid of a bull and then being afraid of, like, an untouchable object, you know? Yeah. I do question, though, uh, this is, like, where the cool things, like, if this was season, like, four, maybe season five, uh, you know, um, Walt, he would definitely not be afraid of Tuco. Like, he would nah, be... Tuco, uh, Heisenberg would have put him in his place. But for now, you yeah. know, he's still, like, all right, this guy is very strong and he's got a lot of influence. We can't, he, like, he can just kill us whenever he wants. I mean, what, one cool thing, though, about this is uh, this, in a sense, this fight, if this Tuchel scene didn't happen, uh, Walt would have stood, like, really no chance with Gus, in a sense, because, uh, you know, he's been in this situation before. Um, yeah, so, like, when Gus happened, they they were kind of used to being in life-threatening situations at that point. Yeah. Um, so, what ends up happening is uh, one night, Hank calls Walt, and... Uh, we, I actually like this scene because uh, we don't really know what happens. But originally, we like, see like him with like the police, and we're left to men to think like Tuchel like went and murdered his family. But really, he just apologized because he, he even says like, "I'm really sorry with what I'm about to say or something." Um, but then he like you know just so I kind of like Vince Gilligan like is really good with these types of tricks where yeah, like, he makes yeah. yeah. Um, but then he just is like because he like went and talked to Skylar about something else. Um, so. Uh, he just what happened to be at a crime scene um, and made the phone call. Um, and, uh, you know, basically he sends like a picture of Walt thinking like it's, you know, thinking like Walt's going to laugh at it. But we find out, uh, you know, the guy uh, that he sent the picture of is like his victim that the investigated was Tuco's other henchman. Uh, yeah, we'll that to Walt saw him beat the shit out of. So Walt, yeah. you know, it's like a funny joke. Ha ha. You know, this random drug dealer died. But Walt, it's like, oh, oh shit. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> And the funny thing is, as this is kind of one of those funny things, like this is actually in a sense unrelated to Tuco because the guy just, uh, you know, something fell on him, like the a big like door of a car fell on him and he just bled out. So it wasn't even Tuco that even killed him, but it's that fear, uh, you know, that uh, Walt was feeling, thinking that Tuco did kill him. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I just think it's kind of cool. Like I mean, he probably would have bled out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I just think it's really cool, like, Vince Gilligan even, you know, we talked about, like, in the CM Brothers things where unrelated things happen, like, um, with the red versus blue stuff, even though this isn't the, this is kind of the same thing in a way where he just happened to, like, do something stupid and die. But, yeah, and, it's like, like a really, like, you know, just coincidence, you know, it happens. Same thing, uh, and it happens later when, uh, you know, when Walt and Jesse go to meet at that mall, and that guy just happens to be, like, sitting there waiting for his daughter to picking to pick up his daughter at the mall and Walt Jesse yeah, thinks just he's like chances luck whatever you want to call it it's just not on their side yeah um so basically um Walt thinks like Tuco's gonna go to his house so he takes Jesse's gun um so that uh for so that way he can defend himself and he tells Jesse to get out of town and when he comes home um pretty much uh He's just going to go on the one pretty much because uh, he grabs his gun and goes for all his money. And it even kind of is cool to see, like, even how rookie he is because Walt just keeps his money, like, in the air conditioning vent pretty much. Yeah, Walt, um, just, he just, like, keeps it all in one place. Yeah. Um, and uh, pretty much then, then uh, 
you know, you know, Walt and uh, Skyler tries to have Walt talk to him, but like, you know, Walt even uh, just can't even say anything because uh, he's just so in fear and he's about to speak. But then uh, Jesse pulls up and um, when Walt comes out, he thinks Jesse's an idiot because like he just showed up at his house and like, right. you know, that's and like. And it turns out Tuco's in the back to fucking threatening Jesse. Yep. And he threatens. Good thing Walt, Jesse uh, knew where he lived, by the way. Huh? Good thing Jesse knew where his chemistry teacher from high school lived, by the way. Yep. I don't know. Imagine so, that. He's like, tell me, uh, bring me to Heisenberg. And he's like, I don't know where he lives. Oh, well, sucks to be yeah. you. And then, um, yeah, uh, basically he holds, the, the, the episode one ends with uh, Walt and Jesse being held at gunpoint, kidnapped pretty much. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, um, but like I said, I liked seeing that fear. And it's cool to watch this back now, like, because uh, it's like Walt and uh, Jesse, like you know, you you uh, you get to really see like how they were like in the early stages of doing the meth and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, so then um, the next episode, because um, like I said, we'll talk about the these. It's basically a reviews of two episodes because it's a lot of big things happening in these two episodes. So we'll just say what um, Scott, Tyler, and everyone don't know where Walt went. They just think you like he went missing, um, and um, you know Skyler's basically. And uh, I find it kind of funny. Um, the police officer that's investigating, like the like fi- trying to find Walt's the same guy that Hank gets the Gail Benico, um, yeah, like file from. You don't really. Detail. That's really cool. Yeah, because you don't really note. You don't really notice it. Um, like it's because you notice it more in hindsight because you like completely forget about it. And, um, um, you know, I'm not going to say what, you know, for spoilers, but uh, it's it's kind of like that moment in Better Call Saul, where it's like, you know, that guy who got screwed over by Walt in season one, got screwed over in Better Call Saul, you know, just like a fun little, hey, it's the guy, poor guy. Yep. So kind of the um, same situation here. It's like, oh, hey, the same police officer. That's cool. Yep. So then um, pretty much, uh, you know, one thing we didn't mention is uh, like Walt got like a phone call. um when uh, he was talking to Skyler in the bathtub. Because this is important because uh, when uh, Hank and, like, the police officer um, go out, we find out, like, pretty much uh, it's not in Walt's, like, phone records, pretty much, um, if you go look it up. Uh, Because, you know, he has the second cell phone. So, uh, basically, it can't be... It's an untraceable phone. Um, And this ties in because this is, like, you know, one of the big things that, like, Walt and Skyler consistently fight about the rest of the season, pretty much. Um... And, um, pretty much, um, and this is, I'll let you talk about maybe everything that happens with, uh, Hank and, like, the kidnapping and stuff. Because this is the episode where Hank became, like, where Hank's story starts and he became, like, an important character. I mean, he was always in it, but this is where he becomes, like, you know, where his story starts and he becomes an important character in the show. Yeah. Uh, what I think is really cool is that, um, um, like, Walt, he's... Walt's missing, and he ends up uh, end up looking for Jesse, uh, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Not knowing that they're together, the same, you know, not knowing like the two are linked. Um, yeah. Uh, Hank ends up going to Jesse's parents' house uh, and asking uh, for uh, information on him. His his mom thinks that he's in like legal trouble, so that sets up what happens with uh, his mom, you know, t- kicking him out of the house. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, uh, Hank ends up. Uh, looking for Jesse's car, uh, which uh, he finds out at the hideout, uh, where there, where Walt, Walt uh, well, where Tuco is holding Walt and Jesse. Yep. Um, and you know this is really cool because you got to really see like Tuco. Like, uh, we find out like, um, you know, Tuco's place got raided pretty much by. So he's busy himself on the one right now, um, and pretty much. Uh, he he uh, for, he's basically forcing like Walt and Je- well, mainly Walt to go to uh you know Mexico, Mexico. with him to cook meth. And huh? I like and I like how Walt's like I have a family here. Tuco's like you have like a million wives in Mexico. It's great. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm like Jesus, this guy's fucking nuts. You really see how oh, messed like, up. The whole time he like hates Jesse. He just wants to kill Jesse. I don't, um, mean, I don't know why he just hates for some reason. Yeah. Because every time Jesse says something, he just basically like tells him to shut up and all that type of stuff. Like, um, and then it's uh, and then um, 
you know, pretty much, um, and uh, Tuco doesn't know um, that his cousin, who is like one of his henchmen, uh, is dead yet. Um, and that's integral, and that's a pretty integral part, because, uh, and he doesn't know, like, Walt, um, you know, uh, Hank's his brother-in-law, who's working with the DEA, because obviously they, they know, like, Tuco's such a nut job, if they, uh, you know, find that out, they're afraid what could be their fate. Um, but pretty much, um, you know, Tuco says, like, you know, if, basically, if Walt doesn't go to Mexico with him, he'll just kill him. Um, and, uh, you you clearly know too. It was the cousins probably that was the ones that were going to put him to Mexico because he mentions like it was like his family uh, that had the connection. So it was probably going to be the cousins probably putting him to Mexico. Which and um, then um, you know, this is where we first meet Hector Salamanca, like in general. Um, and uh, you know, um, and they try to get Jesse tries to get Tuco to um, you know, um snort the um you know the ricin, ricin meth thing. But, yeah and uh pretty much uh when jesse says that uh there's um like hot sauce in it um or no like some type of spice in it that he doesn't like he doesn't want he doesn't want to take it um and uh which is kind of funny um so what happens is they try to stuff it in uh tuco's burrito um yeah but uh hector uh, ends up like ringing his bell constantly. Yeah. Like Tuco's like, "What do you want?" And he ends up just yeah. knocking Tuco's uh, burrito on the floor. So I like how it's cool. While like Hector, even when he's like barely even able to move, he's like trying to yeah. save Tuco. And I like how Tuco's and, like, "Old oh, man, what the fuck is wrong?" Like he's not even realize Hector's trying to save him. Yeah, it's kind of funny too because like this was we really weren't sure like if. Hector, like, even, like, was really with it. Like, if he knew what was going on around him. And this is, like, the scene where we kind of found out, like... that's kind of why. Like, like, well, and Jesse figured he wasn't, like... He couldn't tell what was happening. So, like, talked about it, like, in front of him, you know? Yep. Um, so, so uh, ended up kind of screwing, screwing them over. Tuco, um... And, like, Hector continuously is, like, winning his bell at Walt and Jesse, like, later on. Because uh, he knows, like, they're up to something. And because, like, you know, Tuco realizes, like, you know... He knows his like uncle like doesn't typically lie um, when it comes to like no, it situations right? like this, huh? It's his grandfather, right? Oh yeah, right. Because he's the he's the uncle's um, he's the cousin's uncle. I yeah. um, and um, so he basically beats the crap out of Jesse to like force them to tell uh what uh what they were planning. And I really like this scene, like when he's beating the crap out of Jesse and Walt. You can just see like he goes into Eisenberg like mode and basically he just calls Tuco a worthless degenerate piece of filth and you deserve to die um it's like poor poor jesse Tuco, like actually i i think i read somewhere that like Tuco, uh, the guy who played Tuco, accidentally like gave aaron paul a concussion during that i'm not Damn. sure that, i'm not sure if that's true or not uh when he, he like pushes him through a door a slant like, knees him pushes him against the wall and you know, yeah. like poor guy I actually read somewhere recently online too. Like, it was hard for Tuk, the guy who plays Tuko, to like play that character because he, yeah, he basically was like glad he, he got killed off because uh, he was Cause just so like, high energy, you know. Yeah. Um, I wonder how he felt when he had to come back and do it for Better Call Saul. He was like, oh, <laughs> all right, well, I better take some actual math to, to get. Yeah. So um, and then yeah, um, you really see the Heisenberg come out of um, come out of yeah. uh, uh, Walt in that moment. But, um, and I think what's kind of cool about this Jesse, is, like, although he, he does show he cares about Jesse, you know, because, like, you saw Jesse had, was picking up a rock. Yeah. And he and said he wouldn't go like, to distract Tuco. I feel like if yeah. Jesse didn't have, like, a weapon, Walt well, wouldn't have said anything. Yeah. And it showed, like, he also showed he cared about him, too, because he wouldn't go to Mexico unless he had Jesse. Um, yeah. Because he didn't want, because he was going to, I think Tuco would flat out was just going to kill Jesse, pretty much. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, he he uh, you know, picks up the walk and he hits Tuco off the head with it. And, and this is basically like Jesse's revenge, you know, like Tuco beat the shit out of Jesse in season one and has been treating him like shit ever since. And you know, so Tuco and, he, and it it's not only uh, you know, Tuco's but not only Jesse's revenge, it's Aaron Paul's revenge because he gave him a freaking concussion. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not sure gotta, if that's true or not, but I mean, that's what I read. You got a question? Maybe if you like, uh, I'll look it up. He actually like legitimately like. Not obviously full force, but like just a little tap, like 
hit Tuco like saying, take it easy, buddy, because you just gave me a freaking concussion. Uh, so then, um, yeah, pretty much, uh, I think this scene kind of shows, too, like, um, but, like, maybe, like, Jesse and Walt, um, humanity kind of kicked in because, um, they easily could have killed Tuco, like, right away, but they just couldn't take the shot. Um, so I think that's kind of cool in a way. Um, but then, um, you know, they're about to take off, but Tuco has the keys, and they see somebody pull up, um, you know, thinking that it's the cousin, so they take off, because they... You know, if um, they, they probably want to get away from the, like the Salamanca family, knowing how Tuco is. And um, why don't you talk about uh, who actually pulls up, um, unless you still uh, uh, who ends up pulling up in the car is none other than Hank Schrader. Um, yeah. So after, by the way, Tuco was already in really bad shape. Uh, he and Jesse got into a huge fist fight, and Jesse shot him in the gut, kicked him twice, and then pushed him into a hole. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I like how Walt was like, just let him bleed out. You know, that was kind of like a Heisenberg moment, too, where he was just going to let Tuco bleed out and die, you know? Yep. Um, but after Jesse and Walt uh, start running away, um, they Tuco starts, like, heading towards uh, Jesse's car. Uh, and then Hank pulls up thinking that's Jesse, you know? Because he's, yep. he's looking for Jesse. But uh, he once he gets closer, he sees it's Tuco. And, and I like how Hank knows, like, right away, like, okay, this guy is, like, dangerous. I gotta... Yeah. And, uh... I was, like, kind of but... joking when he thought it was Jesse. And then when yeah. he saw it was Tuco, he got, like, super serious. And what's cool about it, too, is, like, earlier in the episode, they basically, like, revealed, like, they were looking for Tuco pretty much. And, uh... Hank, like, didn't think they were gonna find him because he was, like, on the run pretty much. And what a coincidence, like... It's just kind of funny how that type of stuff happens happened like in police like shows like they'll they'll just randomly find the guy when they're not even like actively trying to look for him like um but that happens to Hague actually uh later on in the show uh where he, you know he did all the search and and like did all tried to, everything he could to catch eisenberg and he catches him the way he wouldn't expect to catch him so um but yeah they get into a shootout and oh yeah and by the way i looked it up yeah uh, aaron paul did get did, did get a concussion when uh tuco pushed him at the door all right, so there you go. Um, so you want to talk about the shoot, the actual shootout itself between Hank and uh, Tuco? Yeah, the shootout's really cool. Uh, um, when uh, grabbing the, the machine gun that was in um, Jesse's car, he accidentally pulls on the uh, lever to make it like bounce up and down. Yep. Uh, so Tuco is just like shooting everywhere, uh, but Hank's like very precise with the pistol. Uh, it's really cool. Cool shootout, but um, eventually when uh, Tuco's like crouched down trying to reload the gun, uh, Hank uh, manages to shoot Tuco as soon as he uh, right between the eyes as soon as he uh, pokes his head out. Yep. And um, um, Hank approaches him. The uh, the car bouncing up and down actually like slowly slows down, which is kind of the show like Tuco's heart stops. Yep. And uh, since we're on the subject, this is like we said where Hank's story starts because um. Basically, this is the starting of uh, Hank's PTSD and everything like that. And, like, Hank um, didn't do too much in season one. This is the first time he's, like, Hank took out Tuco, you know? Yeah. That was, that was uh, like, a pretty big deal. So, uh, this is, like, the first time Hank has done something, like, super important. Yeah. Um, and this changes Hank's character because he starts to get the early signs of PTSD. Um, he's seen as, like, a big hero um, to everyone at the, you know... DEA because he just killed like, um, you know what we known as the time as like one of the biggest like drug distributors um in the in world. The yeah, I don't in, think the in the world, like definitely in the area. And he got like a big party for it. He got like a big promotion. Um, uh, someone took Tuco's grill and like gave it to uh Hank. Yeah. Um, which Hank ends up, ends up uh, throwing into a river because like he's too yeah. traumatized. And, like, uh, other things, like, when he goes down the elevator, he's, like, you know, um, having, like, bad memories of, like, he's hearing, like, the bullets, like, shoot out, so he's having bad memories of that. Um, Although he constantly like, hides it from everyone, like, whenever he's alone, he has, like, a panic attack. Yeah, and then uh, um, one other notable one is, uh, you know, when it, um, he, like, brewed his own beer, and, like, the caps, like, consistently pop off, but he hears it, like, his gunshots. Um, like things like that. 
And I feel like, too, it's not necessarily like him. He's hiding it from everyone, but he kind of, because they showed in, like, season one, Hank never really knew how to take his emotions. So he didn't really know how to handle, like, having PTSD because he never knew it really, you know, he always hid his emotions from everybody. And honestly, this is the first time we really see that, like, the whole macho, like, superhero guy who, like, we see in season, like, in season one, we think that's just how he is. You know, he's, like, the super badass macho dude. But in season two we kind of find out that it's he's not really like that you know he's kind of like he's a big teddy yeah. bear and he, he just like keeps up a facade yeah um but then it gets worse because then when he gets to promotion um and you can see like hank doesn't really transition well in the promotion because he's not like and that's relatable he's not really with anybody he knows he's like the only one in that group that can't speak spanish so it makes him not be able to do like the job as well um and like um He's with a guy like, you know, I believe his name's like Tor- Torti or something like, like it's something uh, uh, related. I think, yeah, right? Tortuga, um, which means like tortoise in Spanish. Um, and like this guy like takes his time and everything. But Hank just wants to get right to the point, uh, which honestly you can sympathize with Hank there because the guy's just sitting there like picking out like stuff in a magazine. And Hank's like there to work. Um, and like they're making fun of him in Spanish. But uh then, um, you know, when they see, because Totorga was like working with, was like an inside job working with the cartel and he was supposed to have some type of deal. But we find out like his head got cut off and like um, strapped. On. Yeah. And we found out. Um, and that's poetic because his name is Tortuga. Yeah. I think that, I think that's why that, what they were going for. And yeah. When Hank sees that, he's like freaked out and he uh, ends up like having a little panic attack behind the car. But, yeah. like, all the other uh, agents are like, hey, welcome to the area. Do you, like, they're, like, laughing about it. Like, this is common for them. Which, uh, is, yeah, it's very interesting. And then we find out whoever put um, whoever put it in there uh, had, like, a bomb in it, and it blows up. And basically, everyone except for, like, one guy dies. Um, and, like, but, even like, that guy's, like, super messed up. Yeah. And this, like, you know, obviously makes, like, Hank's PTSD even worse because he just saw, like, a ton of people like blow up around him and he pretty much and we find out kind of later on and, like that could have been hank you know if he didn't start having that panic attack he would have gotten blown up too you know yep so that's like, find... over his guilt as well um so um in a sense too um this is all connected to walt because uh you know we're going to talk about it more in season three we find out that uh the cousins actually were the ones that were behind this because we see like they show it like it actually happened in, like, in, you know, season three. I forget which episode it is, but obviously when I watched the episode, I remember. Um, and uh, we talked about this before, like, everything with Tuco, um, and probably is more of a hindsight thing, like, sets up everything with Gus, set, um, you know, becoming, like, mainly um, the main drug kinpin um, in season four. Um, which and, I think uh, is... I know we were on, like, these first three episodes, for a long time, but that's because like this is like when the mo- a lot of stuff happens. Yeah, uh, like everything up until Better Call Saul, like stuff happens, but like it's definitely like you know like it, yeah. it's like a slope, you know. Yeah, the Hank stuff too. Those like everything like it doesn't. It's not all one episode either. They spread out in between the episodes. Right. I was stuff. just saying that like like we were on like the first three episodes because like a lot of stuff happens. Uh, a lot of stuff happens like up until Better Call Saul as well, but like it's like you know it's it's definitely a lot less. Yeah. Or like so uh, let's get back to Walt now. So everyone's kind of questioning uh how the hell is Walt going to explain to everyone why he disappeared because he can't he had to go over and say yeah I got kidnapped by a drug lord because why yeah, would like a drug lord ask questions. Yeah. Uh, so his brilliant plan is to strip naked and go into a supermarket. Yep. Um and he he pretends that he has a fugue state. Uh, basically pretends like he has amnesia, like he doesn't remember anything. Yeah, like the guy's testing his brain, and he's like just doing weird stuff. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because uh, we just talked about this. Uh, we recently just did a video um, comparing Breaking Bad to Death Note. And in a sense, this is similar to Light's plan because uh, it, Light kind of does the same, not the exact same thing, but he basically gives himself amnesia to like, you know, take down L. Um, and yeah. that's a... Sort of the same thing. Yeah, um, it's, it's a bit different. This is more like Walt's excuse so he can get back to normal. This yeah. Light's plan was like, yeah, you know, like that was like a part of a 
bigger plan. This was like, yes. Yeah. All right, I gotta, you know, people are gonna ask yeah. questions, so I gotta give myself amnesia. It's just cool because, like, we talked about similar that. reasons, but like different, like, result, I guess, would be the, uh, yeah. And I, I think we didn't remember it as well because uh, it's not like as important as the, it is in Death Note. So yeah, um, and the amnesia. Well, didn't actually have amnesia. He just like faked it. Yeah. So um, basically, um, no one really wants to like send Walt home because they're afraid this is gonna happen again. This could happen again. Yeah, um, Walt's not too happy about that because he wants to start like cooking meth again. Yeah. So uh, what ends up happening? Oh, is, by the way, uh, Jesse's fine. He just goes back to his house. You know, no problems. Well, actually, Jesse oh, is a Jesse's a part of the plan in a sense too, um, because he 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 knows like everyone's gonna be look the DEA is gonna be looking for him. So oh right, has- talk about this part. Yeah. So what happened was um, Jesse uh, and we like we see this girl in season one. Uh, she's like that like hooker on the side of the street who like Jesse yeah. hangs out with every now and again. Yep. Uh, Jesse's plan was to, uh, well, he had all, she, we, uh, she, he had her, like, flush all the, any drugs she had in the, um, apartment. Uh, yeah. he, uh, gives a call to say, like, oh, uh, Jesse's in this apartment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, when the DA raid in and, like, arrest him, he, his alibi is, he was just partying with her the last couple days. And he also, um, stores, um, the RV and, like, all the meth stuff, like, at Badger's cousin's house. Um, yeah, so like no one like can find any evidence that like Jesse was doing yeah. anything wrong. Which I actually forgot about like Badger's cousin. Like he was even in the show because he's not in it. He was only in like a small part of it. Um, yeah, and I like and, uh, I, I know this happens to later, but like when Hank is like interrogating the uh, I forget her name, like Wendy or something. Yep. Um, and I like how she's like, "Hey, you're the guy who wanted to me to screw that football player," and then Steve Gomez just like looks at Hank and he's like, "I'll explain it later." Yep. Because, like, that was pretty he, like Hank said that, like, Junior was, like, a football player, broke his leg. Yep. Um, and then, um, and pretty much Walt kind of had to take a big gamble here, because he knew Jesse wouldn't talk, but he had to basically rely on, like, everybody around Jesse, like, not, not talking pretty much. Um, so it was a fairly big gamble. And what I like is, because Breaking Bad really brings this message on, they actually question Hector, and, um, you know... Hector and Jesse, like, don't like each other, so you would think, like, he's going to talk. But uh, Vince Gilligan wants to put in that perspective, like, criminals, like, don't like to, like, basically rat out um, anyone to the police. And that's pretty yeah. much what Hector did here. And, like, uh, kind of- Gus even brings that up later on. Like, when uh, when, Hector, when Hector apparently rats him out, he, uh, he says that no man, no kind of man talks to DA. Like, it's kind of like an yeah. honor amongst thieves type of thing. Yep. And uh, that's, like, pretty much, uh, you know, and I think that's why we really didn't talk about, like, when Jesse actually starts working with Hank, um, like, pretty much uh, that's why that's such a big thing, too, because, like, Jesse pretty much hated Walt so much, he didn't really care about that type of honor anymore, pretty much. Um, And um, then um, pretty much, like, Hank and Gomez pretty much have no choice but to let Jesse go because they couldn't get anything, any evidence on him. Um, even though, like... It was a risky move on Jesse's part. Like, his plan was literally to get himself arrested. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, why don't you talk about this next part? Um, when Walt gets, uh, I guess, not, um, the analysis, um... Uh, The doctor's, like, giving him a checkup, and, uh, you know, he's asking Walt all sorts of questions, but Walt asks, uh... You know, I have, like, patient confidentiality, right? Like, if I say something, you're not allowed to tell anyone else. And, like, yeah. you think, oh, is Walt going to tell him about, like, you know, he's a meth dealer? Yeah. But, uh, he actually says that uh, Walt just ran away. Like, he yep. um, like he wasn't actually, like, he didn't actually have, like, brain issues. And uh, Walt lies here, but, like, not fully. Like, he tells, like, half-truths, you know? Yeah. Uh, Which I think is really interesting. He mentions, like, his son... Is like um, uh, I forget what what it's called, but you know his son has leg issues. Uh, Bell's palsy or some. Um, yeah. No, cerebral uh, palsy. Cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, like he, they're expecting a child. He um didn't plan on. He is underachieving when everyone else around him is like overachieving or like super yeah. successful. So um, you know, it's like Walt was lying about you know like him. 
he just ran away. But, like, the reasons why weren't lies, you know? Yeah, which is cool. Like, even though, like, Walt, like, lies, he, um, he tells enough of a truth where, you know, it makes his lie actually credible, um, which yeah, I think is cool. Like, like, you can see his logic, and you're like, oh, I mean, it must, it can't be a lie, because, like, it makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, so I think that's uh, pretty damn cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, I do like the scene, uh, we should talk about, like, when we see Walt and Hank together, you can tell, like, Walt kind of feels bad, because, like, even though he doesn't know he has, like, PTSD, like, he feels bad, like, he has to get, he got into that shootout to begin with, with Tuco, because it's pretty much, it feels like it's his fault, like, later on, you can make the argument whether Walt feels bad about it, but I feel like here, he generally actually, like, felt bad about it, in a sense, um, then, um, and pretty much, like, the next couple of batch of episodes really aren't anything important. Basically, uh, with Walt anyways, Walt's basically, like, trying to basically uh, mend fences with everyone and make sure, like, you know, because basically um, his family's kind of falling apart right now because, uh, so he can't, like, go out and, like, he has to, him and Jesse have to kind of stop cooking meth for a bit because they're going to start to really get suspicious if he's still, which like, this. kind of a flaw, like, which with each season of Breaking Bad, it, like, repeats the, oh, Walt and Jesse can't cook for this reason. They can't cook for this reason. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there needs to be conflict. They can't, they can't just be doing, they can't be cooking all the time with no issues. There wouldn't be a show. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I feel like this is one of the weaker reasons why um, they, they have to stop cooking. Yeah. Um. So pretty much, um, you know, um, basically though, uh, Walt's trying like everything he can pretty much. We're not going to go into detail to like make everything right with his family, but Skylar's kind of like seeing right through his BS and like, you know, Walter Jr. I don't think he's really like seeing past it. He's just kind of like ashamed a little bit and upset that like how his dad's been acting. And in that episode, um, he finally, like, uses the name Flynn, which becomes very important. No, I, I, I sort of important. I don't want to say very yeah, it's, important. It's like, it's like a detail to show, like, how how Junior feels about his dad. You know, when he call, when he starts calling himself Walter Junior, you know, you know, he's on Walt's side. When he starts calling himself Flynn, you know, like, he's, like, distancing himself from his dad. Yep. Um, so then, um, but me, and I feel like, too, like, in between, like, je- even though... Je- Jesse's like doing the most stuff because uh, it's, it's, too much. it's more than Walt's much. Um, why don't you talk about what happened with Jesse? Well, um, after Hank interviewed his mom, his mom thought some is Jesse was in like in legal trouble, so she went to the house and found that meth lab that was in his basement. Yeah. And so basically, she has she kicked him out of the house. She's get, get she's like taking all this shit and um, you know kicking him out because like they technically yeah. own the house. house. Well, because I feel it's like Jesse got the house from his aunt who died of cancer. Which you kind of feel, you can't help but like, even feel, it's a little bit J- Jesse's own fault, but you kind of can't help but feel bad for him because he had been such a screw up uh, where this time it actually like wasn't his fault that like, you know, the DEA actually came and looked for him and stuff because. Uh, yeah, like of it, all the things that Jesse did that were totally his fault, the thing he got caught for wasn't his fault. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of um, sucks for him. Yeah. Um, and I like this, like, little scene, um, cause, like, you can tell, like, Jesse's parents are, like, good people, but, like, a bit of a scummy move, um, because, like, yeah, basically, uh, with, it, like, with, like, no warning. Yeah, um, and, uh, pretty much, uh, like, she tells him to, like, turn his life around, and Jesse actually has a good point, like, how can he, like, turn his life around now, cause he's basically homeless and can't really do, do has no money or anything do anything pretty much uh you know but like you see like jesse um and this we could see like what jesse's changed he's cut uh where he becomes like that drug addict who just is gonna say anything pretty much just so that way like he can his mom would give him another chance pretty much because i like where he even talks about like hey i'm gonna go to business school and someone points out in the comments like he hides all his drugs so that way she can't see like he's doing them at that point and stuff yeah uh so i think that's pretty cool and you kind of can't help but feel bad for Walt and Jesse, like, in that episode. Because you can just see, like, even though Walt's ha- fall from grace kind of happens later. Uh, but, like, Walt's losing trust in his family. 
And Jesse, yeah, it's like, like the beginning of the end for him, you know. Yeah, and you know, um, and I think that's why like they connect. One of the main reasons they connected well because they pretty much um, like you know, lost well losing everything pretty much. Um, and uh, I think that's why like maybe Ozymandias is so important because uh, once Walt lost Jesse's trust, he basically did lose everything. Um. Yeah, and um, you know, um, you know, then you uh, they have like a, um, a fight in that scene, and then pretty much, um, you know, um, we find out Skyler too, and this is a little bit important. It's like starting um, to you know feeling the effects from it. She's smoking cigarettes now when she's like pregnant, um, and you know, when Walt's like trying to confront her about it, um, she basically. Um, uses, like, one of Walt's lies, in a sense, to, like, get herself out of it, in a sense. Like, say, maybe I didn't do it, maybe I did it in a fugue state, um, and uh, everything like that. Um, but then, once they start cooking again, um, pretty much, uh, Walt and Jesse, Walt's not happy with the money he's making, because he's breaking the law, and he's not really getting much money out of it, and it's not gonna, he won't get to his goal, pretty much, uh, Before pretty much by then. Um, so why don't you talk about what happens there? Um, you know, oh, like uh, what the Walt plan gets is. Salt from uh, his doctor. And am I talking about the right thing? No. I was, um, basically, they decide to take the kind of the Tuco wool in a sense, where they become the. Oh, okay. Main... That, okay, sorry. I thought you were talking about something else. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, Jesse uh, meets up with Badger, who you know was the guy who. Uh, Jesse, like, got into a big fight with in the desert, um, you know, yeah. in season one. Uh, Skinny Pete, who was the guy who had his connection to Tuco. And uh, yeah. Combo, who I don't... is Was this his first appearance, or he, did he show up before? Uh, that was his first one. Okay, so yeah. Um, these are, like, three, three Jesse's buddies, and they uh, decide that they're gonna be taking over Tuco's territory, pretty much. Yeah. Um, we're Walt, you know, and Jesse's going to be cooking the meth and acting as, like, the bosses while the, those three are, like, distributing. Yeah. And this is kind Which, of cool. I think because... it's really cool how, like, this is, like, a low-level version of what they were doing in Season 5, you know? Like, Season yeah. 5, they were professionals. They were, like, you know, they were, like, dominating the international market. But here, they're, like, you know, they're riding a couple streets, you know? It's yeah. nothing big, but, like, they're their own bosses for a while. Um. So then what happens is, uh, you know... Uh, Skinny Pete gets robbed by, uh, you know, two uh, meth addicts. And um, when, uh, you know, Jesse comes over, um, and I like Walt, like, you can make, you know, like, you know, in a sense, like, this is him, like, thinking of his family, but you can see maybe this is where that ego is coming in. From oh, Eisen sorry, hey, we forgot to mention that, like, um, uh, before this, uh, Jesse ends up moving into a new apartment. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, his yeah neighbor, and, and his neighbor is pretty hot. <laughs> So he ends up, yeah. uh, ends up like, start dating her. Yeah. They, like, officially start dating in Better Call Saul um, or a little before that. Um, yeah, we should just mention, much, like, they, they meet. They don't really get along for a while, but, like, they start having, like, yeah. a fling, you know? Like, friends but, with um, type of thing. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of important because, like, basically, like, she gave Jesse a chance because, uh, you know... Um, and you don't really find out, like, why she just let Jesse stay there. But, you know, when you find out, like, she's kind of in, like, the same state as Jesse is. Yeah, you so, kind like, of see, like, like, a other type of thing. Like, you know, they know, they, like, know what each other's going through. So she gave him a chance. Yeah. Um, and, like, Jesse, like, used an alias name at first. Mainly because, you know, um, you know, he uh, didn't want it. Because he was, like, you know, a pretty big, like, big criminal for, like, that alias, I should say, anyways. Uh, not anywhere near was what he's probably going to be in El Camino. So, um, and oh, yeah. Um, yeah, El Camino, he's like wanted, like one Walter White level, like the whole the whole yeah. country wants him. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Then. Uh. You know. Um. But then fine. But then the uh, I think somebody uh who like probably was like one of his meth customers was supposed to assume like recognizes him. Um. And like says his last name. So then basically she has, he has to give away and she like says, you know, as long as you don't do whatever you're doing here, you're fine pretty much. Um, but then, um, 
Yeah, so then, uh, you know, after the Skinny Pete situation where he gets robbed, and like I said, this is where you can make an argument where it's Walt either thinking of his family, or maybe it's that ego of Eisenberg kicking in, where, like, he's not satisfied yeah, so, like, with... Someone, the... someone took what belonged to him type of thing. Yeah. Someone screwed um, him over. Yeah. So, um, you know, he... And this is where you could say, too, like, we always talk about, like, how Walt was manipulating Jesse, even if he didn't know it. You could even see in season two that he's still manipulating Jesse, in a sense. Um, and um, he basically, like, wants Jesse to handle it. So what he has Jesse do is he has Jesse, like, go to the people uh, that took his meth and, you know, basically hold them at gunpoint. One cool scene I like um, is, like, when Jesse, like, Jesse, you could just see how much of a rookie he was because he's never, like, done anything like this before. So he's, like, practicing everything that he's going to say. Um, and he doesn't really know how to do it. Um, which you, I mean, uh, you really think about it. I mean... Um, if, it's because you can't just you know go in there and like just plan. You have to probably like, plan out, like you know, hold someone at gunpoint and stuff. Like oh that. yeah, I mean, have some idea. I mean, you can, you've seen. The, if you're in that moment, you kind of don't really know what you're gonna do. <laughs> like exactly. Um, and I kind of like what a little cool scene that Breaking Bad does is like the mail person comes and uh, like puts like the mail in and I kind of like when you like she's she like tells Jesse to have, like, have a good day and Jesse's not gonna have a good or no ask Jesse how the weather's gonna be and you know as Jesse's like I hear it's gonna be like 72 and Jesse you know is basically just about to go and like you know hold people hostage and he's talking about like and um real world stuff and everything um and I like to like kind of seeing like people like outside the plot like you know when they don't even know what's really going on um, yeah, so uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. But uh, Jesse then, like uh, breaks into the uh, like the apartment. It it, like, it looks like shit because you know like they're meth addicts, not really doing anything. But, and uh, it, you could say like uh, it is kind of cool to like see this because uh, you know even though like you don't because you don't see this in like season I mean maybe season three but not really season four and five but like you know since they're in the professional level we don't have to see like these type of things. Honestly, uh, even ever like even season one and most season two and three like yeah. it, it's about making the math we don't really see like the effects of like actually the people who take it you know yeah so i think it's kind of cool but yeah why don't you talk about like when jesse actually goes and does this uh jesse breaks in uh but before he finds the uh the parents uh he finds a little kid who's like in a bad shape you know like the, he's clearly like neglected and shit yeah um so jesse's like playing with the kid like trying to make him feel better and uh just to make sure, like, he's out of the room before he, like, holds his parent at gun, his parents at gunpoint. Yep. And it's kind of cool, like, you know. Um, really, oh, sorry, what's up? I think you were about to say what I was going to say. Uh, I was going to say it's kind of cool to, like, to see how Jesse, like, you know, even though he's the one, like, actually holds him at gunpoint, he's actually, like, the better person in that room. Um, and yeah, he actually I was going to say, like, like, this is, like, a first showing that, like, Jesse doesn't like it when, like, kids are involved in this. We, we, saw, yeah. we saw Jesse's a good guy, like, with his little brother and how he didn't want his little brother wrapped up in, like, drugs and stuff. Yeah. Like, it just shows um, that Jesse's, like, he's not a good person, but, like, he's probably the best person out of, like, a group of bad people. Yeah. Um, which, he becomes that um, in season five. Like, Oh, definitely. Like, he's definitely, like, the um, uh, lesser of two evils or yeah. lesser like you can make of, like, the argument, all of Breaking Bad. Like, you can make the argument it's either him or Hank or, like, the best two people in the show. Um, yeah, like morally, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Marie, you could, I mean, Marie is obvious, but I'm saying, like, as the main character. Yeah, yeah, like the main group who, like, actually, like, are involved with all this criminal shit. Yeah. So, the guy's head gets tr crushed by, like, an ATM machine that was stolen, and Jesse oh, calls well, the cops. You should probably say, like, the, like, he kept calling his wife or whatever a skank, so she just pushes the ATM on top of yeah. him. Um, so that just shows how messed up, like, that whole, those people were. Um, so then, uh, and, like, you know, um, he calls the cops, and he, like, gets the kid out of the room, and I think Jesse, like, even, in a way, he, he's not yeah, happy, he but, even, like, like, stole his mask back. Yep. Because that's but, what, like, he, what they came here for. Yep. And, um, and the money that, like, they owed him and stuff, too. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool, like, you know. Like, Jesse, I think, even though he, like, feels like crap after this, I think he kind of feels like, in a sense, 
like he did the white fin, um, because yeah, you know he, he, got, got, he got a little kid out of there, you know. Yeah. And he brings the little kid to like um, a house or something. I forget where he brings the kid, but like he brings him to like a safe place, and he's like, "All right, bye, kid. You know, like be safe." Yeah. Um. So I'm glad, you know, I'm glad at least, you know, if nothing else, Jesse saved the little kid, you know. Yep. So then uh, this gets used for leverage for a while because uh, everybody like now like uh, thinks Jesse murdered somebody. Um, so they're like, you know, basically they're going to get all the money and they become like p- pretty well known. So Walt wants to like expand nationally pretty much um, and expand, not you know, into more areas in Albuquerque. Um, and... You can see this is where also he manipulates Jesse because he basically manipulates him, um, you know, by telling him, like, you could gain all this money and get all this power and stuff. Um, uh, So I think that's pretty damn cool. Um, But then um, I just want to make sure, like, you know, one one big thing I forgot about to talk about, because it's actually fairly important, um, is in that same episode where, you know, Jesse is having that deal with the meth addicts. Uh, we finally got some uh, closure, in a sense, with that uh, Walter, Gretchen, and Elliot thing where he lied about, um, you know, um, how they were paying for his treatment. So what ends up happening is uh, Skylar, like, talks to Gretchen about it, and basically, um, she, you know, she doesn't reveal, like, that Walt's been lying, Um but, like, you know, she realizes Walt's been lying, but doesn't really know why. And Walt, I should say, ties in something where he brings up, like, the guy that invented the diamond didn't get the credit, like, the credit for it. Um, so uh, he did, uh, somebody else, like, got the money for it or something like that. And that, and that ties into this, uh, the same thing. So when Walt sees, like, Gretchen at a house and stuff like that, Gretchen just immediately walks off and she's pissed. And, it, like, Walt wants to explain it to her. So they go to, like, a restaurant, and, you know, Walt apologizes for, like, dragging, you know, her into his lie, but he doesn't, like, want her to worry about it. He's getting the money. But, like, Gretchen pretty much wants to know, like, why, like, she's involved in the lie, pretty much. And uh, Walt won't say it, obviously, because, you know, <laughs> like I said, pretty much he doesn't want to say to anyone except, like, Jesse and everyone else that he's to, to cook in meth. I yeah, shouldn't have I mean, to explain. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Um, this seems like really cool because, uh, you see that switch like instantly turn on. You see like Walt leave the table, but Eisenberg, um, is the one that, you know, is there when Gretchen leaves the restaurant. Um, because, uh, why don't you talk about what happens once Eisenberg shows up? Uh, he tells her to go fuck herself pretty much. Yeah. Basically says like, you know, you used, uh, you know, my research to profit off of it pretty much um but this is kind of like you know where we really um we find out kind of like what left uh gretchen um you know when they broke up and stuff like that so walt's the one that called off their relationship um but it's like oh, yeah. really he, he, he's only he left gray matter because of it yeah yeah um so i think that's like you know really um cool and i think it's in like this episode in a sense we like find out like walt had more um, you know, behind gray matter, um, then, you know, um, then the name, um, so, um, that's, I think, but this is pretty cool, and I like to, like, Gretchen really screws him over, because basically, uh, she just says we can't pay for your treatments anymore, just to, like, really screw over Walt and his lies now, in a way, like, now Walt has to come up with a new plan, pretty much, um, I mean, he didn't want to accept their money anyway, but, like, he, like, kind of needed, like, them to be still willing so he could say, like, oh, yeah, they're paying for it. So he lies pretty much and says, like, they're broke. And it actually makes sense, because one thing no one really talks about in Breaking Bad is since it ha- takes place in 2008, 2008's pretty much, like, when, uh, you know, uh, the economy kind of was um, going down- downhill. Um, so, like, big companies and stuff were were and that's also a mega like, main reason I feel like talks about like why Walt can't really afford like you know to get the treatment because you know because the economy is also pretty much in the toilet around this time. Yeah. Um, so he kind of uses that to his advantage because um, basically he says like you know Gray Matter made like so many investments and stuff like that. Um, 
that it like co- you know cost them uh you know uh to lose like money um and i i feel like too like he says that that they're broke pretty much uh, i don't want to like talk about it and stuff i think has a finish line she's like driving like a really expensive car so she knows he's lying but can't like it point she can't like confront him about it in a sense yeah. um and then, uh, I'll put a, well, are we, so are we on the badger part? Yep. So let's talk about, um, why don't you let talk about it? It's because you've seen, I mean, obviously without sport, you've seen, seen better calls. So the cool hinds of you. Can you talk? Uh, yep. So let's start off with badger, um, meeting at a drug deal with, um, a different guy. And badger's like super like suspicious. Like, I don't know, man, you sound like a cop. And the guy's like, look, man, I just want some meth. Uh, after like, of this badger finally gives him the meth and then the guy pulls the gun on badger like you're under arrest so the guy did end up being a um, a DA agent and it, it's kind of um it's like you know like see like i, I like how break it bad like police officers actually like do this and stuff like that yeah. um oh and i we forgot to talk about this but uh jesse's rep uh after like the whole spooge died from the atm uh hit his, his like reputation like got like really increased a lot. Like, talk about that. I didn't do it. Maybe I forgot. Well, I was just saying like, it's really yeah. the only time you get to see like the reputation is like as like an important part of the show. Yeah. In season five, like we have the say my name moment, but like that's kind of that's kind of different. Yeah. And it's one of those things like normally we. See, the effects of the meth, we can see them making the meth and, you know, like, all the stuff that goes with the business. Yeah. And, like, we don't really see, like, how reputation really comes into the show. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's cool to see, it's cool to see that. Yeah. Because uh, they're on, like, the street level, you know? Um, and anyway, one, cool uh, thing, one cool thing I didn't notice when I watched it, Badger just sitting on a Better Call Saul, like, um, bench. Oh, yeah, like a bench, yeah. With, with, so, like, that's like, so that's kind of, like, setting, like, you know, setting that up in a sense. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, they, uh, Walt and Jesse are worried that Badger's gonna uh, spill on, uh, who Walt is. Yep. So, um, uh, they go, uh, Badger's lawyer ends up being, uh, Saul Goodman, and, uh, he's kind of a scumbag, you know, <laughs> like, he's, like, uh, you know, like, he's not, like, a super clean moral lawyer, but uh, he's gonna get known. Badger to try and, like, spill the beans on who is, like, his boss is, you know, which is Walt. Yeah, and uh, we get to kind of see Saul before this because we see like his commercial, um, like before this scene happens. Which yeah, he's like he's just in the background, which is really yeah. cool. Breaking Bad does that a lot, where like they'll introduce important characters like just in the background. Um, I want to talk about like what Walt goes yeah. meet. Me. So, um, yeah, um. I like to, um, you know, wouldn't help out, I'm like, has the money and stuff like that. doesn't even talk about that. It says, you got money. And, um, and you got to see, uh, what's, uh, I think what, like, um, a really cool thing that, like, Saul wins of the show, um, is that comic relief, you know, because Breaking Bad's, like, such a, like serious show, like Saul wins that comedic factor to it, and that's like yeah. what Vince. I mean, Milligan... Jesse's also there for comedic relief too, as well. But like Jesse does have yeah. like his more serious moments. Um, but yeah, and that's what Vince Gilligan like wanted from Saul, and it's funny too. To, um, you know, uh, the actor that plays Saul, Bob, um, Aud- I can't pronounce his last name, but uh, the um, you could just easily look it up. You know, um. He pretty much, you know, his agent, like, told him to take this wool because he said it could be really good for you. And we found out it's really good for him. Oh, yeah, uh, no, he's, like, super famous now. Um, so, yeah. um, Walt meets yeah, with, uh, uh, hmm? well, then, Yeah, I'll let you talk about the Walt and Saul scene. Um, Walt goes to meet with Saul to, he's posing as um, Badger's, like, uncle or, or father or grandfather, something like that. Um, yeah saying that he doesn't want Badger to spill on who he's working for because he doesn't want this guy to come and kill Badger. Just make an excuse, you know? But uh, yeah. Saul is, like, convinced, like, nope, I'm going to have Badger spill the beans on who 
he's working for, and then he'll be off the hook pretty much. Uh, and uh, one one reason too, like Saul pretty much knows instantly, like that, um, like Jess, you know, like Jesse really didn't kill, like because that's the main reason, like you know, Saul's like not afraid. One cool scene we should talk about is before, like you know, Walt and Jesse go in. There's that famous quote where you know, Walt's like, um, thinks it's ridiculous that like he tired Saul because you would expect Walt to think that way. And when Jesse says, "No, when it goes in, that's tough." You don't want a criminal lawyer. You want a, a criminal lawyer. Basically implying, like, yeah, like, what well, Saul's, like, we a criminal all along. And he has been mentioned, like, he's worked, he's got So I, that makes me quite watch Better Call Saul. We are going to see some episodes, like, where he actually does that. Um, uh, we haven't seen any of that with Emilio, so I'm not sure. I have a feeling I have a, I heard it's going to happen, though. Probably. Um, I mean, again, in Better Call Saul, we're still, like, five years before Breaking Bad starts, so. Yeah. Um, I was going to say. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so, but uh, Walt is, like, coughing when he's meeting Saul. Uh, yeah. But eventually, you know, Walt and the desert through to, like, Give away who uh you know Badger's working for, but yeah. Saul um recognizes Walt's cough. Um, uh, he uh recognizes Walt's cough. You know, it's something. Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't know what you want to say without being super. Like, he, there's a better call Saul reference here. Yeah. Um, um do you want to say it or? We'll yeah, sure. I mean, the creator confirmed it, so like, it, and it hasn't happened in the, it hasn't happened in the show yet. Uh, the, the creator okay. just said, like, oh, yeah, that scene in Better Call Saul. I mean, that, that scene in Breaking Bad is, like, referencing something that will happen in Better Call Saul. Uh, uh, Saul mentions, oh, no, no. Don Lalo, it, it wasn't me. Uh, Ignacio did it or something like that. And uh, yeah. and uh, Walt's like, what are you talking about? And Saul's like, you're not with Lalo? You're not, you're not Lalo's guys? Uh, so I thought that, you know, that's just, like, a cool thing, like, it's it's a it's a reverse reference, you know, because like it it hadn't happened yet. Yeah, because they well, hadn't even like in the universe, but like they hadn't planned it out for Better Call Saul. You know, it was just like a one off line. Yeah. Um. So um. Yeah, what ends up happening is uh yeah because Saul recognizes Walt's cough, like he said. Um. Basically, basically uh, and I even like to like for like they know that like even though like Saul's the one in fear like. He's even like, wait a minute. He's like trying to still plan it out, even though like he's about to like, you know, that he's being threatened. Uh, he, he like wants to plan everything out and everything. Yeah. Um, Saul's, Saul's a good negotiator. That's definitely his trait. Um, um, but Saul ends up saying, why don't we just badger? Yeah. And um, um, as someone who's seen Better Call Saul, it is kind of sad to see like Saul be such a scummy person in Breaking Bad, you know? I, I I guess I can't really agree with you right now. So yeah, I know, but um, like it's it's not as extreme, but like it's going from season one Walt to season five Walt. You know, it's just like they're yeah. so different. Um, so then um, basically they agree to work together, and we should say one big moment we missed before all of this even ha- before like Walt even meets Saul or anything like that. Um, basically uh, Walt finds out like everything that's been going on with Hank recently. And he finds out about Hank's PTSD. Um, and basically, like, Walt gives, like, Hank a motivational speech, like, saying, you know, to get up and get out there in the real world. And what I really like about this scene is um, Hank pretty much, like, even tells Walt, like, you, pay, you there's no evidence you can really give me because we come from two different worlds. It's really cool because uh, Walt even says, like, like, without, even though he's telling truth, he's telling, like, not the whole truth. Like, he even says, like, when I got my cancer, um... I'm not really, like, afraid of anything anymore. Um, yeah, like, was, like, he said he was, like, afraid to go to bed at night, but now that he knows, like, his end is near, he sleeps fine. Yeah. And, um, and he even says, like, it's, like, the mystery, you know? Like, the unknown is what people are afraid of. But now that Walt knows, like, all right, I have this amount of time, like, I know what's going to happen, he's fine. Yeah. You know? Like, he knows, that no matter what, I'm going to die. Yeah. Um. So then, um, you know, Hank... Um, I think it's, he goes back to, like, his old job. I mean, he already, I think, like, he still has a 
had it, but like he basically, I guess, like isn't uh, he doesn't want to go back to seeing tortoises blown up like, anymore. So yeah. you know, um, the the DEA agents blowing up, he was fine with, but that poor poor tortoise, that's yeah. what got him. Yep. And um, he's a mineral enthusiast and a turtle lover. Yeah. Um. So pretty much, uh, in a sense, Walt's speech um, drove Hank right back into his own case, um, which happens a lot in this show. <laughs> Anytime Hank's like about to say, yeah, I'm done with this case, Walt's like, uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, you gotta uh, catch me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, uh, so then, um, they plan out, uh, well, uh, Badger's gonna have this, um, you know, like, basically where he's gonna meet with Eisenberg, and, like, he's gonna do a transfer and, you know, give him the drugs and everything like that. Yeah, and Saul oh. has it, like, Saul hired a guy who, um, will t- who, like, get paid to go to prison for people. And yeah. I mentioned because he went into prison as, like, a teenager, and he basically spent, like, his whole life in bars. It's like, he has, like, uh, He's yeah. like, he was like institutionalized, you know, like he can't live outside of prison. Like he, he wants yeah. to go back to prison. And uh they have really bring it up after this, just something I thought was like kind of cool. Um I can't think of the name, but there's a movie that like explores that uh Oh uh, uh Trash Tank Redemption. Yeah, where like, you know, after like they get out of jail and everything, like you get to kind of see like how they act, uh like how they can't like, you know, we had two oh, and Shawshank kind of does that. It, most of the movies in prison. Um, uh, but there was scenes where that happens. Um, so, what? Um, pretty much, uh, this happens. But Badger's at the wrong bench. He's at the wrong guy. That and what a coincidence too. He like looks exactly like this guy too. Like it's just what a coincidence. Yeah, I know, right? So basically, uh, I like this scene in a sense. Uh, was that adrenaline rushing? Um, because, like, he, Walt has Jesse, like, you know, basically go one badger, and he, like, distracts uh, the DEA who are, like, you know, recording this um, by, like, standing in front of it. Um, and uh, there's a funny meme of this where um, I can't, I can't fi- I find it offhand where, uh, you know, um, when Walt drives up, it says, uh, you're looking for Eisenberg, I'm right here or something like that. And he's, like, right in front of him. So, um and uh, when the guy says in the movie, like, I'm blocked, he says, you're not really blocked, I'm right here. So uh, it's pretty damn funny. But then, you know, when Jesse warns him, he goes to the other bench, um, and uh, basically the guy gets arrested, um, and they, he's believed to be Eisenberg. Um, but then um, we, uh, we Saul ended up being more than just uh, this one-off character, like everyone probably, like, assumed he was in him. Um, yeah, um, Saul ends up finding out where Walt works, and uh, he ends up telling Walt, like, hey, you're going to need a lawyer, and uh, you're going to, you know, send some of your funds to me. Yeah. So basically, like, Saul's doing what Walt did to Jesse and blackmailing him into being his partner. Yep. Um, and he says at the end, um, his catchphrase, if you ever need, if you want to make more money, um, better call Saul or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, this is pretty cool. Um but in hindsight, um, Saul dug his own... Um, his yeah, own- really. Saul could have just minded his own business and went back to work. But he kind of got himself wrapped up in the wrong crowd. Yeah. Because um, in season five, in a sense, Walt gets his revenge in season five. Um, yeah. I mean, unintentionally, but yeah. Um, so that's kind of funny. Um, um, what's kind of cool about this is a lot of people... when I Because you can watch this clip on YouTube... A lot of people spec because he said like someone was able to trace Walt. A lot of people think it was Mike that helped uh, Saul find uh, Walt. Um, Honestly, probably yeah. Now I think about it. Yeah, um, so they but, uh, would work together. That's so. pretty much it for the first half of season two. We should talk about too because uh, we're gonna be idiots if we forget to talk about this. Better Call Saul becomes such an important episode in Breaking Bad. Um, it oh, really yeah because if it wasn't for Saul, Gus wouldn't have happened. Uh, all the Hector yeah. and Salamanca stuff, the uh, cartel. Uh, yeah. They would have been introduced to Mike. We're, we're going to talk about that the next video, literally. Um, and, uh, yeah, pretty much, um, you know. Uh, we, uh, we're not going to give a rating yet. Oh, at the, when we do the next video and we get to the end of Season 2, we'll give, her, give it a rating. 
Uh, you want for now, this is a very good first half of the season. Um, yeah. The first three episodes were very intense, and like, even though the next couple weren't as exciting, like it was cool to see like that street level, like they're, like you know, they're running, they're running the corners and streets and stuff. And it's like, uh, like cool to well, see like his own henchmen. Yeah, it's cool to like see um, like you know Walt and uh, Jesse's live like in between those episodes like crashing down in a sense. Even though we know, uh, the yeah. funny thing is, is it, it, um, in hindsight, like Walt's life looks bad, like in that point, but it's like nowhere near to what becomes in, uh, you know, season two, like seasons, like five, season five. Um, yeah. and it's kind of cool to think, uh, even season four, cause season four, he was terrified for his life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, Another like little thing we should talk about. Um, we're just gonna mention it real quick. Is it's in Better Call Saul, um, like when Skylar starts working back for Ted Benicky again, and we're gonna talk about because that becomes important uh, in the second half of the season. Um, yeah. And there's like an integral part of the storyline that uh, affects. Uh, it's the reason, uh, in a sense, Gus dies. Um, yeah, in know. a way, actually, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, it's not our cool- favorite storyline, but it is important, so we kind of gotta talk about it uh one one uh one other thing i'd like to talk about is skylar consistently says in this season like uh this you know our life right now has been such a roller coaster um you don't even know and i keep saying skylar wait until the ne- wait until the next season <laughs> or, oh, like, yeah, even no. se- you got three more seasons of this shit all right don't don't yeah. even think um <laughs> yeah i think that's uh pretty pretty much it since we're coming back do we even want to bother doing the plugs? There's really no reason to do. That. We're uh, making a no, video. No, no real reason. Uh, anyway, check out our next video for um, the rest yeah. of season two, and uh, you know that should be out soon. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we're just gonna take a break. Taking like, yeah, you know. Like, guys, we'll uh, see you in the next. Well, you'll see us. We won't see you. Oh, whatever. <laughs>